All right, we're back with more web novel cut contents. I believe we left off last time with Rem stinking Al suspicious because remember, Al has a helmet and I'm not sure if it's the source of the helmet, right? The miasma because Al says so. So Rem says, right? When they enter, Rem is sniffing something staring at the back of Al's helmet. I'm not sure if this is intentional writing. It sounds like it is to maybe prove that the helmet is the source of the witch's miasma. And then one could then assume, because Al is also from Valakia, Al is having, like, Al's helmet is the meteor of the witch that got clout and had an Archbishop sent to Valakia to destroy it, or some shit. I don't know. Some people are theorizing that. That's a fun little guess. But Al hates Ram. And we left off thinking that, yes, I think that there's an association between Ram and Roswell, and somehow Al was involved in something and hates Ram. Al seems to be a very shady character at this point, based on what Ram is saying. Things are very weird about Al, so we'll keep a very close eye on him. All right. Oh, yeah, this is the whole of the wilderness stuff, right? There's a third person from another world right now, which assumes that I guess there's only actually three other worlders right now from beyond the Great Waterfall, which is just an Isekai character. Episode 18. A kidnap could be the reason for Puck's immense power. Yes, because we've seen in the beginning of Frozen Bond a voice, which was a kidnap's voice actor, which was citing the actual vow or the pact or an oath, whatever it was that Puck made, right? When Betrigus starts despairing about the power held by Puck in his star beast form, Puck mentions Echidna as the explanation. Oh, so this is the episode where everything like um, Subaru died, right? Well, Subaru always dies, but this is the one where Betrigus was also like going against Puck and the mentioning of the 2000 number, right? Of saying, you know, at least half of the Shadows of Satala is needed to, you know, contest me. About the power held by Puck in his star beast form, and Puck mentions Echidna's explanation. Um, Echidna, yeah, all we know so far is that the uh, uh, Frozen Bond, Puck made an oath, and the person that he made an oath with Echidna, beyond that, I'm not really sure, but I guess there's something he gained from it that could be the powers. I don't know. But Puck and Echidna, close relations. Let's keep that in mind. Episode 19. Krush had a close, non-romantic relationship with someone with the late member of the royal Lugunica family. Okay. When preparations are being made for the white whale battle, Felix exposes some of Krush's past to Subaru. Felix mentions that Subaru reminds him a bit of someone who was in Krush's life? Really? The late fourth prince of the kingdom of Lugunica, Fourier Lugunica. It is also said that Fourier made terrible excuses to meet Krush, and as such, his goal was obvious. The implications that he had a crush on Krush. Mmm. So, I think uh, something we need to be very mindful of as we uh, watch ReZero is looking out for characters with blonde hair and red eyes. The EX1 story, we will definitely cover that shit. Because remember, what is the defining trait of the royal Lugunica family? Blonde hair, red eyes. That's specifically why Felt is a suspect late prin- uh, 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 what's it called? A princess that was kidnapped in the past, right? Because Reinhardt's like, your name? Sorry, your age? It lines up perfectly when, you know, um, people start to, I, I guess it kind of makes sense of when she could have been born. And the, uh, Lack of last name, right? And the fact that the insignia literally is fucking glowing. Right, right? Blonde hair, red eye. Is it a fang too? Wait. It's also fang? Everyone had a fang? Even the boomer kings? We'll keep them out of that. Okay, okay. Blonde hair, red eyes. Very important. But Krush? Damn. A royal prince had a crush on Krush. And... Remember again about the context of when Subaru arrives here. Literally everyone of the royal family just died and then Subaru shows up, right? It's extremely suspicious. But beyond that, Krush had... It's like a childhood friend. Non-romantic, but I wonder how Krush felt when he died, right? Because don't, we don't get any dialogue from existing people from the Lugunica Kingdom talking about the royal family, about their heroics or how much they liked them or how much they disliked them. Like, how does Krush feel about the death of this guy? Is she trying to find, like, I don't know, is she trying to avenge him? Trying to figure out the cause of the fucking plague? Who knows? Subaru admits to Rem he has a crush on her. That's crazy. I think this is the stuff that a kid nut was also mentioning in the videos because in the anime, we never get any of that shit. When discussing the fact that Subaru successfully eluded Krush's lie-detecting divine protection, Rem tells him that she believes in him with all his heart. 
This prompts Subaru to deliver a second I love Amelia, but adds that looking at Rem making his heart flutter. Ooh. After some chit chat, Rem said she'd be okay with Subaru's second Y. <laughs> <laughs> we are totally uh, dual building at this point. A translation of the web novel scene performed by Rem and Water can be found here. Well, yes, we know that Subaru actually does care about Rem a lot. He loves her a lot. We've known extra cut content, in the, even though the anime doesn't show it. Fourier? Can I click this? Let's see this. Baby Fourier. Baby Krush. Fang. Red eye. Blonde hair. And Imperial Court Mages? Nobles? I don't know. Purple guys are not Imperial Knights, but there's Krush. There's Baby Krush. But yeah, uh, what was I going to say? That Subaru does love Rem. Absolutely. Maybe just as much as Emilia. Who knows? But Emilia was the first one, and Subaru is very loyal to that. So that's why he doesn't really show Rem as much favor compared to Emilia. All right. Next. Episode 21. Rem successfully extracts, <laughs> successfully extracts a confession from Subaru. <laughs> After the White Whale battle, Rem is frail and injured. That's right, because Rem apparently took a lot of... That's Makotov in the back? No. How the fuck could this be this GG, bro? Because it... Unless Krush is actually 100 years old. What? Why? Cause like, no, 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 I, I don't fucking... I... I... What? No... You, listen, it doesn't make sense... Skincare does not explain this white hair, bro! No! No! No way! The wise man is... No, you guys are capping. You're fucking gaslighting right now. I refuse to believe Krush is actually like 120 years old. No, 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 no. This, this guy... No, Krush is a regular human. No, you guys are capping. You guys are fucking capping. This is not Maklatov. You fucking lied to me, bro. Get out of here. All right, what are we doing? Uh, Rem is fail, uh, frail and injured because apparently she took the fall damage from the tree, right? When the tree fell down to take down the white whale, there was a huge impact that apparently Rem tanked for Subaru that wasn't shown in the anime. After she requests him to say, I love you, he does so and adds that he will never let anyone else have Rem. After that, Rem is suddenly fine and goes, no backseas. Well, she said she requested him to say it, but I mean, the wording here says extract, right? It, it says extract the confession. So <laughs> Rem can't get Subaru to authentically, spontaneously say it, but she can get it out of him. <laughs> kind of weird. Yeah, kind of weird. Just like how Subaru treats Amelia and grooms him, grooms her, bro. Kind of weird, Rem. Kind of fucking weird. <laughs> All right, next one, next one, next one. Episode 22. Ooh, extra loop. Very important mandatory. Let's focus. Originally, there were three loops taking place after the White Whale battle. The first from Arc 3, Chapter 62 to 65, and the second from Arc 3, 66 to 74. In the light novel, they two loops merge into one. I think this is kind of talking about when Subaru tried to go... Um, like, remember when Annie's cut content stated that like Subaru wanted to see if he could save Amelia or and Rem? But... After trying, he realized that it could only be one or the other. So maybe this is the loop that they're talking about when he was like trying more and more, but realized that it's too late. I'm not sure. Sloth and Greed are the most well-known Sin Arc Bishops. Oh, Regulus and Betrigus are the most popular, huh? Julius gives some exposition on what is known about the Sin Arc Bishops. The only two that are known are Sloth and Greed. What? Everyone else's secret hidden? Huh. Okay. Sloth is suspected to be the most active member of the whole witch cult. Yeah, and he seems to be one of the only few that's just constantly spamming Day of the Ordeal. Come on, we need to fucking get Amelia's body for, you know, Satala and shit. With more than half the reports of their activities pertaining to him. Bro, Betrigus, if we're talking about his merits and goals and achievements, it sounds like he's hard carrying the fucking cult, man. 
Greed, however, uh, does not have much to his name, but is widely known that the single-handedly destroyed the fortress city of Garkla in the militaristic Volakian Empire to the south. So this must have been the point. Remember, in the Volakian Empire, a metia relating to a witch was getting hype. And the cult said, that's a no-no, that's a heresy! That's blasphemy, only Satala. They sent an archbishop to fuck them up. Now it's confirmed that yes, it was Regulus that did it. Slaying even one of the national heroes, eight arms Kurgan in that battle. Oh my god. Valachian world building. One of the national heroes. Are these dudes on Reinhardt's level? Because, like, I want to know more about the Valachian Empire, but that's like such endgame content that I probably shouldn't be allowed to. But this is a nice little breadcrumb. More world building. The Volakian Empire, remember, they're very expansionist. Their goal is to basically get more territory under their name. While a feudal monarchy like the Dragon Kingdom of Lugunica, they're more forced with um, uh, handling with, like, taking care of their own and making sure that their regions are held, you know, correctly. Apparently, they were, they're not on good terms, right? And if you think about it, again, if you really think about the timeline when Subaru shows up, as soon as the Royal Kingdom the royal family dies out. Isn't this literally the fucking perfect opportunity for the Volakian Empire to invade Lugunica? If they are warring kingdoms and we're literally sharing a border, right? We're literally next to each other and we have a bad history. Like, should they not be attacking us? To this, Wilhelm also adds an anecdote of his past. That he once had the opportunity to cross swords with Kurgan in a proxy battle to avoid an internal conflict. Hype! Hype! Oh, man. What other national heroes exist in the Valachian Empire, bro? <laughs> Found in Web Novel Arc 3 of Chapter 63. This shit is so fucking hype. Just greed and, and sloth. Lust, we know that envy probably doesn't exist, right? So it's just, it's just sloth. Pride is empty as well. So in fact, there's only five... Archbishops at this current moment with the sixth slot of pride being empty and the seventh slot of envy not just even existing But I want to feel I, I, I want to I want to like assume that Subaru had the Envy witch factor put placed into him was given the authority of envy returned by death in the first loot seller run when he declared his love for Amelia and desire to save her and Th that's when like Satala and him had like a pact and he forgot the memories at, at that point I want to believe that's what happened but damn bro I guess lust sloth and wrath right lust sorry lost lust gluttony and wrath are just fucking around gluttony maybe people don't remember because he just eats their names and memories wrath who knows sloth I mean no we already know sloth is moving yeah yeah sorry sorry fuck 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 Gluttony, wrath, and lust. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Those three, they're missing right now. Sorry, I, there's just too many fucking things to keep track of, but I think we'll end it here for this round of cut content. I think that this shit is extremely interesting, especially about this part, right? The National Heroes, Valachian Empire, right? The Metia. Maybe it's Al's helmet. Who knows? I wonder exactly which witch was getting praised in the Volokian Empire, but that is so hyped to see, and I'll see you next time.